Hi everybody, I'm Todd McKim along with a coach and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look back at the Arizona State game, preview what's in store next as the Ducks head to Seattle to take on the Washington Huskies. Have a couple of uh, profile specials for you and plenty more in this edition of the Coach's Show. Well, it was a Hall of Fame weekend here at the U of O. There were 10 people inducted into the Hall of Fame, a couple of former football players, Ross Carter, John McKay. Uh, a nice day as far as the weather, but the Arizona State kind of spoiled the festivities as they came to town, played very good football, I thought and got away with a win 35-24. They played very well. I think you have to give them credit. Uh, certainly we've talked before about the fact that everybody is going to play their best game against us. We're the defending conference champion and that's an honor but it's also a responsibility and, and one that we did not live up to yesterday. Uh, once again a team came in and played almost perfect football. Did not turn the ball over. Made big plays when they had to and, and certainly we were not as efficient at making big plays. We had some opportunities and I think it was some missed opportunities that really cost us. Probably should have had a touchdown early, and, and then uh, a couple passes I'd like to have had, but but probably comes down to our inability to control either line of scrimmage. I think maybe was the key to the game. Yeah, some people you know want to say uh, well you overlooked Arizona State, but I think the way the football game started, that certainly was not the case. You stop them three and out, you get the ball, you march down the field, you get a field goal, you, you get another stop, you march down the field and on the goal line. I think that was one of the turning points in the game. That series down where you had the ball first and goal inside the five and couldn't get it into the end zone. No question. I, to get the ball in good field position twice and come away with only three points is, is not going to win very many games for you. I think we were disappointed in that. Uh, we just didn't get it done at that point. And then we had some other opportunities. Every time we would go sort of fight and scratch and get ahead, uh, we would get a big play that would sort of break our, break our back. And, uh, you know, I, I think we battle. I think some part of it now is that injuries are, are taking its toll. We're not as physically healthy, certainly in the defensive line, uh, a couple other positions that we'd like to be, and it's going to be a, a factor in us down, uh, for us down the road. You mentioned the line of scrimmage of both sides of the ball. Uh, you were unable to get a, a running game. Uh, it's kind of the second straight week now that I know Ricky has been held in check a little bit. Though. What do you see as a, a concern there? Well, I, I think that uh, we did not block very well, that we did not sustain blocks, and we, we had some good positive runs, but we had too many negative runs. We had too many people that came loose in our backfield, and I felt that was probably the big key. Offensively, Tony uh, threw the ball 55 times. Uh, it was tough throwing into the wind. In fact, the wind was a factor in uh, judgmental decisions uh, by the Arizona State coaching staff as they elected to kick into the wind in the third quarter and had it at their back in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I think that's fairly common. You, most of the time, you want to make sure in any close game that you have the wind in the fourth quarter. Our opportunity to take the ball obviously superseded that in the second half, but uh, it did work against us. The wind picked up and was fairly consistent uh, the second uh, or last three quarters of the game. I think it was a factor. One that, again, I'm not sure it affected really any of the big plays that happened. Uh, certainly the ball being stole out of Tony's hands, the, the wind didn't affect it. The, the jump ball with Alex Molden. Um, and a couple, I think they made some key conversions uh, down the road. Certainly the the third and sixth play that got them to the fourth and one before they scored was a big, big play for them. All right, let's take a look at the Pac-10 scoreboard before we get into the highlights of this game. Check it out. You see Stanford uh, gets a win at home. I think that's the first time they've won at home this year as they defeat Oregon State. Stanford still in the bowl picture. UCLA behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, over 200 yards rushing. They snap a five-game losing streak to California, 33-16. This game was played in the Rose Bowl. In the Palouse, a battle for survival. Arizona defeats Washington State. That bumps the Cougars out of any postseason consideration. Arizona still in the hunt. And USC and Washington, a strange 21-21 tie. The Huskies led 21 zip going into the fourth quarter, and the Trojans came up with 21 points, kicked the extra point to earn the tie, and thus remain in the front runner seat as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned. We'll have more on the Huskies later on in the program. Let's go to Autzen Stadium for the game. Hall of Fame weekend and uh, some of the inductees on hand. You see Ross Carter on the near side, now a great track and field star in the Masters ranks right there. Ross uh, played for the Ducks a long time ago, played in the NFL. And Joaquin Cruz, the outstanding track star, 1984 NCAA champ and also gold medalist in the Olympic Games. So let's turn to football, though, and get right to it. You stop Arizona State on the first possession and start a drive of your own. Big third down conversion pass here. Uh to Damon Griffin. A nice job stepping up by Graz and then a crossing route. He catches it on stride. And again, we did a great job third down conversion wise in this game. I think we were over 50%. Problem we weren't as effective on first and second down, which led us to more longer third down situations. Play pass again, and this is a play action, uh, excuse me, a pass interference penalty uh, on the linebacker versus Josh Wilcox. 
come back with a sweet play. Um, and again, Kevin Parker puts his head down and gets some good first down yardage there. Uh, another play up inside. And again, we, we weren't sustaining blocks. We're getting some openings. We had to hit them quick. Uh, big third down play here, and it's a blitz situation. We don't have anybody. Uh, Grazi should have probably thrown that away. He didn't have much of an opportunity. So we settle for a field goal. Josh converts. Uh, from about 42 yards out, which is a nice kick. And again, uh, he's maturing, and we're going to need him down the road. It looks as if Matt Belden may not be able to come back and play this year. Yeah, that ties Josh's longest to field goal attempt. And the defense comes in and stops him here. Rule and Asher on that play with help underneath. And you see the, uh, we blow up the counter play. We've got linemen there. Uh, underneath Schmidt, he's got a hold of the legs. And uh, uh, Paul Jensen blew it up from the outside. Joe Donenberg's in there, the whole crew. So third and four. And again, we, we do a nice job. We cannot make the tackle. That tight end is a big, strong guy, and obviously we need more than one to pull him down. Uh, they got the nice first down. Good job, though. Again, we're very concerned about uh, Jake the Snake Plumber scrambling. Good job by BJ to stop him right there. And then a big, big play. Alex Molden sneaks in, blocks us. We don't get the bounce. I would love to have that thing pop up and let Jeremy run with it, but we do get the big recovery and gain a lot of field position on this play. You can see Alex cuts inside. And again, just gets a piece of it there, uh, a little slow on the kick, and then that ball is uh, our ball anyway. We're trying to scoop it. We just cannot get the handle, and uh, we get it back there. And uh, again, good field position. That's a play that a lot of people forget about because if that bounces up, Jeremy's got a touchdown. It looks like you're going to score on this drive, but uh, end up not scoring. Thus, uh, it becomes an even bigger play. Quick series play to Damon Griffin. Come back with a, a load off tackle to Ricky Whittle. Makes a nice cut to get a few more yards. He actually stepped on the back of Damon's ankle there. Um, you see the blocking here. We're pulling the offside guard. Good blocking by Wilcox at the point of attack. Uh, Jelks at the point of attack. Uh, receiver and again I think Ricky starts to cut up here and you see he just trips on uh, Damon who's doing a nice job blocking down the field. So on a second down and 14 here. Come back we throw the screen to Ricky and again uh, makes a nice move on his own there to avoid one. Uh, we don't get the blocking down quite as much as we would like ahead of him and again people are keying on him there's no question about that. You see we just sprint out throw back there's Rick sneaking back across with uh, Bob Baldwin out in front nice block by him uh, eludes one tackler and then we're trying to pick up some other interference as we get down and the, their defensive guy makes a nice play Rick almost loses the ball he's wearing some rib pads which are difficult to to have the same feel for the football nice uh, third down conversion here Damon Griffin makes a couple extra yards after the catch and again I think we're we're in great shape down there five yard line Give the ball to Jelks, and excited to have him back, 250-pound fullback, and he makes about three of it right there. Uh, we take the ball outside with him, and we almost score here. We just get tripped up, and again, he bounces in, but they call it down at about the two-foot line or one-foot line. So on third and goal, we try a play-action pass. We're held badly by number 47. It's not called, which is unfortunate, but that you get some of those, and you don't get some. So we go back to Jelks. Uh, assuming that our big guy can get that much yardage and there's a question as to where the ball crossed it. Uh, we thought our, you know, Graz was seeing the touchdown there, guys know, and I don't think they got a good angle out of it. We almost get a safety there, great line surge inside. Uh, Asher, BJ, uh, Bird, and again, uh, they get out to the one half foot line. And that ends the quarter. They run a couple more plays and then have to punt the ball. And when we come back, Oregon will have the football. They have the lead, 3-0 over Arizona State. As a physician, I'm very busy and they make me feel that my time is important. And that goes everywhere from the teller windows when you first walk into the door to the loan officers at the back of the bank. Centennial Bank is so very responsive. We don't have to wait. Uh, they're willing to accommodate our schedule rather than us having to fit into their schedule. I, I just feel if I, have a, if I have a need, I can just call up and it's taken care of. Your financial partner, Centennial Bank. I feel that they're my partner. New Dawn of Engine Treatment Science is here. TX7 Synthetic Blend Teflon Formula is ground to a fraction of a micron, staying in suspension, unlike these others that settle to the bottom. 
TX7 protects by bonding only to metal surfaces that touch, improving piston ring seals for more horsepower, better gas mileage, while reducing emissions 40 to 50 percent. TX7, the difference is clear. TX7 is available at Fred Meyer, GI Joe's, and Thrifty Auto Supply. Tuesday, the Oregonian features a new selection of recipes and coupons. Well, that's kind of useful, don't you think? Oregon has the football and the lead, 3 to nothing over ASU. The Ducks unable to push this next drive into the end zone and also get a bad break on a special teams play as well. But let's pick it up at the 44. Pretty good field position. Uh, we're on a play action pass at Blake Spence uh, for about a five yard gain. And we actually had uh, Josh open too, but we want to get rid of it to avoid the pressure. Little screen, great catch by Ricky. Reaches out with one hand. And uh, again, we don't quite get the blocking down the field as well or as crisply as we'd like. Uh, nice job uh, by Josh Bidwell here. We worked on the coffin corner kick and didn't get this, but bounces well. And we just were screened. Lamont Woods was screened by the defenders, really couldn't see the ball. He was in great position. It was a great punt in that regard, but we lose 20 yards there. So Arizona State gets it back. This is a third and three, and uh, Plummer just does get the first down. Does, and it's a big scramble. That costs us because that's where Reggie Jordan gets hurt. Uh, bruised his eye, was not able to track things, and he left the game at that point never to return. Uh, big play. Uh, Mitchell, 81, is a freshman receiver, I believe. Big guy. Uh, looks like a tight end, but runs well and made a big play for them. And then we lose... Uh, I think some focus or intensity there very quickly for a second rule makes a, a nice tackle, but it's too far down the field. Uh, they come back again to Mitchell, big play covered by Kip East, and then we are not aligned correctly. We don't get our safety support out there in time, and they make it look pretty easy getting in the end zone. So the drive 80 yards, a big third down conversion by Plummer on two occasions to keep the drives alive. They get the ball back. Do a nice job here. David Coyle stepping up in a strong safety position. He and Paul Jensen. Uh, you can see Paul there playing off the block inside, comes back out, transfers, uh, and they get the guy down right there for a nice uh, stoppage. And here's a big play in this game. It's a third and eight at the 38. Kind of a jump ball. And Mitchell is six foot three, 200 pounds, and he takes it away for the score. Yeah, unfortunately, again, uh, Alex had great position, actually had the ball in his hands, and the leverage of the other guy just uh, sort of took it away from him. We come back, get a nice play on our play action T counter boot, uh, pass to Jelks, and again, he makes yards and sort of moves the pile later on. This is that uh, similar play action. We pull the tackle, pick the ball back to Ricky inside. Tony coming out, nice job hitting Aaron right on stride. Tucks the ball away, uh, cuts up, makes his little spin move to make the guy miss, and then uh, takes a couple other guys with him down the field. That is a gain of 20 yards. The next play we see is third down. You've converted on three third down occasions here. Dameron Ricketts coming underneath on a crossing route. Uh, Graz again hits him in stride. Nice job. We, again, as I said before, we did a great job on third downs. We just had too many of them, didn't get enough positive yards on first and second down. But nice throw there in man to man. Dameron Ricketts beats his man and again gets the necessary yardage for the first down. Pick up a 14. Now here's a first down play. You get six on this one. Ricky just outruns everybody to the outside, does a nice job, steps up, splits two guys. Nice little move there at the end just to get two more yards. Third and four. Coming back is Josh Wilcox on what we call a choice route. One-on-one uh, -on -one with, the, with the strong safety, does a nice job. Third and ten. Third and ten. Third downs. Uh, again, get Kristen McLemore one-on-one -on -one with a strong safety. And nice throw by Graz on the sprint out. You see, nice weight transfer. Put the ball right on the money. And again, uh, extra yards after the catch. And a uh, big first down. Gain of 14. Come back now. We throw the screen to Ricky. Little base screen. 
Gets outside, and again, give him room to run. Did a little bit better job, and I believe got the first down. I'm not sure if they gave it to us there. And then a little bit later on, first and 10 call. That same play that we had hit uh, Jelks before, we find Christian one-on-one. -on -one. He beats his man, draws, sees him, makes a nice throw, and nice catch, and then run after the catch. You can see again, holds the linebacker. Graz comes out, has time here. Uh, nice shot, hits Christian right there. Uh, we got a little too much down the field blocking. I think maybe Dameron has eyes on the back of his head. He knew that was going to be caught, and he'd have to block for it. So with the point after, it is 14-10. Now, this was a big series here. Arizona State driving. Looks like they're going to get some points before the end of the half. This was scary. We gave up a long kickoff return, put them in great field position. And then uh, our defense all stepped up at this point. Bryant Jackson, Desmond Bird right there, Derek Barnes combined for the tackle. And this was a, a big, big concern. They, we forced this uh, incompletion right here. Uh, I thought they would get at least a field goal. For us to hold them without a field goal, this is a big play because they call a grounding penalty here, which it definitely was, and there's also a dead ball foul. And so we could take the penalty, which is loss of down, and moving 20 yards back. So it was a big, big play. Indeed it was. So that made the score a four-point game at the intermission, 14-10 Arizona State with the lead. When we come back, the third quarter highlights as the Ducks come back and take the lead. Partnerships are critical to our success. In fact, success in the healthcare industry is predicated on the quality of partnerships that we're able to forge. It's no different with our banking partners, and the choice is obvious, Centennial Bank. Quality, speed of service, customer courtesy. It's always been important at Burger King. It was important to us also when we chose our financial partner. They treat their customers the way we want to treat our customers, and that's why we chose Centennial Bank. Miller Genuine Draft. America's cold filtered beer. As cold as they come, as smooth as it gets. A beer uniquely cold filtered for maximum refreshment and a quality all its own. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a very cool place. I'm Dream Weaver. This is 1010 AM, The Voice. Come on, Portland. Let's talk. Give us a call at 235-1010. Politics and news. You don't know the first thing about Republican politics. What you guys are trying to do here. Traffic and sports. We're talking about the Blazers today, and your opinion counts. We're your local talk connection. If those other stations turn you off, tune us in. We're 1010 AM, The Voice. Are you ready to do something about your hair loss? Yeah, but I'm concerned it won't look natural. Over the years, millions of men, like yourself, have been concerned that it might not look natural. But at Hair Club, we carefully design human hair, specifically matching the color, texture, and wave of your own. So, no matter where life takes you, whether you're out with friends shooting hoops, whether your hair is wet or windblown, even during the most intimate moments, you'll always feel like your hair is part of you. In fact, I spent a lifetime creating the most natural-looking, natural-feeling hair. Really? Yeah, but don't just take my word for it. Maybe not, but you can take mine. Yeah, and you can take mine, too. So call this number now and receive your free brochure. You'll see men like yourself looking better and feeling great in today's most up-to-date hairstyles. Yeah, okay, I'll make the call. Your free brochure is waiting. Come on, make the call show everybody we're ready for the uh, third quarter Arizona State has the lead 14 to 10 but the Ducks get the football to start the third quarter and mount a drive yeah we came out I think in a good resolve we knew we had to move the ball quick pass there to Kristen uh, he's got that sore shoulder you see him flinch a little bit there Ricky we run up the field uh, get the first down and we wanted to try to mix in the run a little bit better which I think we did on this drive again uh, that is Jabri Hodge catching the quick out again on the sideline coming back and we had now run up that choice route we run a pump route uh, 
to Josh Wilcox. Nice catch and run and a big play. And we try to, again, the choice route is about a six to eight yard break off the linebacker. And he does the same thing and then just turns it up behind that. Draws nice pass on the money, hits him on the run, and he's able, again, uh, Jabri Hodge uh, tries to come back and make the block, almost gets in Josh's way. Uh, Josh says, move over there, fellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stopping for you. So it's third and 16. Again, big, big play. Jabri Hodge, nice catch. Again, call him down on the one foot line or less. Uh, but nice catch and throw by Graz. He has some choices here. Comes on back. Move, we're moving the pocket again. Crossing Kristen across the top and bringing Jabri deep. And he goes up. Nice catch there. And again, he's down about the one foot line. And on the very next play, Ricky Whittle takes it over the top for the touchdown. Right, we'll go over the top. Rick gets in. Uh, nice job. Nice job of blocking up front. Again, you see Bob Baldwin, Mark Gregg, Aaron Jeltz, and then Ricky finding that seam over the top. So the point after, you have uh, regained the lead, 17-14, after the initial drive of the third quarter. Then both defenses kind of uh, come to the party and uh, make it a defensive struggle for the next couple of minutes. Good job by Desmond Bird and Asher there, trying to rip the ball out. Again, we, we worked on that all the time. We couldn't get it out. Uh, these backs were very good at hanging on to the football. See Jeremy take on the block. Uh, Des come off of his block, and those two combine to drive the runner back. So on third and 10, it's a good one-on-one -on -one play here by Alex Molden. This is, we're dogging again. Alex is in great coverage. The, the receivers, uh, the quarterback's forced to throw the ball farther wide than he would like, uh, and that was a combination of pressure and coverage. They try to go up here, double pump it, and uh, uh, Derek Barnes and Mark Schmidt are both there to combine for the sack. And again, this is a, a nice coverage thing. Pumps it there. Pump's trying to go up on the other side. See Schmitty come off of his block. Derek, those two combine, a big sack. Uh, and again, we have some momentum going now. We regain the lead, we push them back a little bit. Draw play again, Derek Barnes sliding back in underneath the block. You see him step, slant, come back under, and do a nice job of filling inside. Also, Bryant Jackson's there to help out. So the forces Arizona State to try to punt, and Ronnie Gibson gets a hand on that one. Ronnie Gibson gets another one. Got a hand on that one, and again, uh, I want to teach him to get both hands so we can get that ball going back the other direction, but he has a very nice job. Uh, gets a big piece of the ball, obviously, and that's, again, good momentum builder, good field position. And then you got to watch this closely. Graz to pass. The ball's it's almost stolen away. It's actually batted by Mike Langridge and it comes right back to him, and he races in for the score. Yeah, an unfortunate play, obviously, uh, the type of play that uh, you don't draw up in the playbook at all, but uh, Graz stepped up, we just got beat around the top, and that was a very fortunate bounce of the ball for them. We come back, big uh, gain to Ricky Whittle, T counter trap. Um, you can see Willie Reif pulling, does a nice job there. Tossi and Mark Gray combining on the double team, and then Rick, again, f finding his way through, and making sure he's falling forward, protecting the football. Gain of 16 yards for Ricky, his longest run of the day. Again, a little quick pass out there to Jabri. Knock the ball down a little bit after the fact. Yeah. Uh, we run the option, which has been very successful. We do not get it at that point. Uh, that's one of the few unsuccessful third downs we had. So at the end of three, Arizona State has the lead, 21 to 17, but again in the fourth quarter the Ducks will come back and regain the lead. We'll have that and more when we return. Every time I call Centennial, it's as if the person on the other line has a smile on their face. And for someone in the hotel business, that means everything. You know, every day they prove to us that they know service. And service here at Sweetwaters is our business. Service is everything. I've been in the real estate business for 20 years, and we've learned that service is absolutely everything. We work with Centennial Bank because they really understand business, and they really understand service.
dinner ideas? Every Tuesday, the Oregonian features a new selection of recipes and coupons. Well, that's kind of useful, don't you think? Check out the WB comedies on Pinky and the Brain. Brain seizing Big Ben. Any questions? Can we make the bells play chopsticks? Then catch an all-new Kirk. It's Kirk's first Halloween in New York. Only an idiot would call this fun. Wow, this is fun! On our Sister Sister bonus, when Tamara's new look turns heads, Tia turns her head into... Oh, it's terrible! Something. Hang out with us Sunday night starting at 7 on WB32. All right, into the fourth quarter we go. Arizona State has the lead 21-17. to 17. As we pick up the action, Oregon has the ball. Third and ten. Another one of those third down plays and another conversion. A nice shot here. Uh, this is a big play back to Josh Wilcox. She made several key catches on that third down stuff. Uh, see, Tone does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket. Ricky's protecting him. Eric pulling out of there. And uh, again, hits Josh on stride right there. Pretty good hit, but he keeps moving. It's the one he got hurt on, and uh, Josh will join us in the studio here in a couple of minutes. We'll ask him about that. Does he always seems to take a few more bumps and bruises than most guys. He doesn't lose that contact. shoulder. We we're throwing this one into the wind, which was difficult, and the ball hung a little bit. Cameron had his man beat. Unfortunately, we couldn't come up with that one. So you have to punt it away. You get it back, though, and uh, here you come again. That's a great catch great by catch. McLemore. That, that, that side of the field gets to be very slippery late in the season because of the shade, and uh, it is difficult over there. Great body control. The pass is, is not that bad, but it's just hard to keep your feet. And again, ni very nice catch by Kristen. Finished with nine receptions on the day. Another great day for Kristen. 100-yard performance. Here's an interesting play. Uh, they call this a backward pass, although where, where he's at, it was not. It was a exactly even, which could have been called either way, and I don't, I'm not going to dispute it. Nice big conversion there, though, to Kristen McLemore on, again, a third and long. Mm -hmm. Third and 18. These aren't easy to convert. No, no. And again, the play pass holds the linebackers a little bit. Move the pocket. Chris beats his man one-on-one -on -one that gets past the first down marker there. Does a very nice job. So a gain of 19. Good for the first down. The ball now at the ASU 46. Uh, little run. That great job by keeping it balanced by Ricky Whittle right there. That was his own play inside. He just tucked it back out and did a nice job. Coming back again, trying to run the ball, trying to get some things going and just let our back read the blocking schemes up front. Second down and 11. Draws to pass. Pulls it in. There he goes. Great job. Great effort right here and a great finish to the play. And that is our play of the day. Here we are. We're in our ace formation. Two tight ends, two wide receivers. We're going to run our stretch pass left, which basically we fake the running play this way. The line all zone blocks that side. This tight end releases. This tight end slams and runs out in the flat. And Tony's coming back looking for either of these two tight ends. Basically, our wide receiver is just clear. They were in man coverage, so the linebacker and safeties both went with one the back and two the tight end. So Graz stepped up here, got pressure from this end who came up in his face, decided to step up, and then took off and found a seam there and showed great speed. Graz has deceptive speed in that regard, and obviously great effort for him to get into the end zone on that play. Let's take another look at it. Again, you see it set up, the ace formation. Uh, we're going to run the play fake there to Kevin Parker. Come back, sees a little opening here, steps up, line sitting there blocking, and he finds that crease, turns it on, and as I've said before, Graz is one of the best scramblers we've had here ever, certainly in this mode. Uh, good blocking downfield, key block to allow us to get into the end zone. So the touchdown after a 70-yard drive with 5.40 to play, and you have a three-point lead. And then one of the big plays of the game, Plummer, hit as he throws, delivers a strike to Keith Poole. Keith Poole's a big play receiver. We had held him in check for the most part the whole game, and he got behind us on that one, unfortunately, makes a great catch. Fourth down. Fourth and one. And we had held him down there, and they run a play pass, and uh, they execute very well. And obviously, uh, it took a lot of the wind out of our sails to go ahead and then lose that uh, the way it did. But we did have time, four minutes. We had three timeouts left. Uh, but we, we don't do a very good job at that point of uh, execution. They do a nice job on their part. Before Tony's forced to throw this one away. Again, we're thinking of saving the clock, uh, but also we need to, to get some things going here. 
Second down, we run the pump route. Again, they cover it. We try to go deep to Kristen, and the ball is again just thrown out of bounds. So on third down. Third and 10, again, we're on a similar play. Uh, move here, and again, we have it briefly. They do a great job of breaking up this pass for Jabri Hodge. Um, and uh, we're forced with a dilemma there, and I, I decided to go ahead and punt the ball away, get it back for four minutes with three timeouts, but we didn't, didn't work out. Yeah, not a real a good punt, and then Arizona State gets another touchdown late, and the final score, 35-24. Looking at the statistics, you kind of wonder. More first downs, uh, the rushing yardage, uh, ASU's been averaging 200 yards rushing, so, you, you know, for the most part, you did a, a half-decent job there. Total yards over 400 to 355. But one of the big considerations was turnovers. One of those resulted directly in a score for Arizona State. The last one was in the last series when the game was uh, pretty much decided. Penalties, third down conversion, 13 out of 24. You can't ask for much better than that. And a couple of sacks, one of those sacks for Arizona State actually comes on that pass that they call a lateral that goes as a sack as well. Individually, throwing the ball, Graz had a t uh, rushing first, excuse me. Uh, Ricky Whittle, 23 for 57. And Martin, who was the starting tailback, rushed for 79 yards on 21 carries. Flip the page, you see passing. Graz had to throw up a season-high 55 times for 340 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. And Plummer was very efficient, had a couple of long balls that helped the yardage numbers, and again, no interceptions there. Now receiving Macklemore, another great day, nine for 108. And four guys, uh, three guys with four apiece, Wilcox, Hodge, and Whittle. Defensively, Rich Rule led the way with 12 tackles. Derek Barnes had 11. Jeremy Asher had eight. Well, after the game, we uh, went into the locker room and got the response from the players to what had happened. We came in this whole week. Coach Blotty was going, uh, who do we play? We said ASU. Where? Stadium and uh, what time? One o'clock. He made sure that we were, we were on the ball the whole time. I just think... They showed up to play. They wanted to make it to a bowl game real bad, and they wanted to get back there. And um, they came out. They came playing tough, and uh, they outsmarted us, I guess. Just really disappointed. I, I thought we played really flat today, and uh, seemed like that going into the game. Maybe in pregame warmups, we seemed a little flat out there. And uh, you know, I, you never know with this team. You know, sometimes you can be, you know, quiet and then just explode. But uh, today, it just didn't happen. Uh, they played some good football. You got to give them credit. They came out, they executed, did some good things, and uh, we worked hard. And uh, things didn't go up for us as we planned, of course. And uh, we're still going to work hard. We got a lot of things to look forward to next week, you know. And uh, they executed. Came out of they executed. They did a good job. We scored to go ahead, and we were all pumped up and ready to go. And they score right back. And we still thought we, you know, had a chance to win this game as long as we could go. And defense went back in there, and we didn't stop them like we wanted to, three and out. And, it was just tough for all of us. We, you know, we didn't expect that, and we all got to play together. And we all got to work hard this next week in practice and just go with it. You have to take your game to the next level when guys are coming in who, um, who are, you know, are not su not supposed to beat you, but they play their their best game on on all facets, you know, offense, defense, and special teams. You know, guys got to really get geared up and um, believe that you know every play that they're involved in is going to be a big play. I don't think they did anything that we weren't really ready for. Um, we just didn't find it in ourselves. We, we as an offensive line have to play better. That's all there is to it. I mean, we can't accept, you know, not being able to run the ball against people and uh, not giving the Graziani enough time to pass the ball. Well, I think any time you lose, it's, it, it's not good. But, you know, it, this is a bigger loss than, you know, ones we've had before and um, you know we're just gonna have to improve on it. The hardest thing to sit over there and see your, us put our defense in the field position they do, have them hold them, us go out there and go one, two, three and out. I mean you're not gonna win games like that. I mean I don't care how great a defense you have, we've got to step up and take charge. So a big step up next week for the Ducks as they visit Seattle to take on the Washington Huskies. More on that later on in the program. When we come back, we'll have a couple of special profiles, one of a current player and one of an outstanding coach. You all know him. We'll be right back. Miller Genuine Draft. The original cold filtered beer. As smooth as they come, and as pure as it gets. Brewed with the choicest tops from here in the Northwest. 
Miller Genuine Draft and those who've discovered its smooth draft taste, making the Northwest a very cool place. Hello, my WB viewing little pork chop. Forget about channel surfing this Sunday because the WB is all you need. Interesting. She thinks I'm interesting. We've got six hilarious comedies. Good one, babe. They're all good ones, Pinky. <laughs> all on one great network. Well, why are we woohooing? Sunday is fun day on the all new WB Sunday night. Way better television. Sunday starting at 7 on WB 32. Want to try new Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. Wrong. It's a shampoo and precise blend of several conditioners, individually balanced for every kind of hair. We'll see. Well, it is actually better. I can feel it. New Pert Plus in five precise new formulas. I'm Dream Weaver. This is 1010 AM, The Voice. Come on, Portland. Let's talk. Give us a call at 235-1010. Politics and news. You don't know the first thing about Republican politics. What you guys are trying to do here. Traffic and sports. We're talking about the Blazers today, and your opinion counts. We're your local talk connection. If those other stations turn you off, tune us in. We're 1010 AM, The Voice. Time for our player profile of an Oregon senior that's played for the Ducks over the course of the years. In fact, hasn't played a whole lot until this year, his senior year. And not only is playing a lot of football, but he's played good football at a couple of different positions. We get more on Brian Collins from Pat McGilvery. When Brian Collins straps on the pads, he's looking to hit somebody. And it's usually someone bigger than him. At six foot one, 205 pounds, Collins has become Oregon's starting strong safety. Now, the position is something like a small, quick linebacker, providing run support more than pass coverage. And it's when taking on the run that Collins gets his chance for some major collisions. And I like taking on linemen, you know. They see a little cornerback or safety coming up, you know, we're going to just run over him. But, you know, I consider myself as a pretty good hitter, so I pretty much try not to allow that. I like to get in the lineman's head, you know, and let them know that they don't put any fear in my heart when they come around the corner full speed. Maybe that's just my, my mentality to try to hit a guy bigger than me. You know, if I could put a guy on his back that's 300 pounds, that's just as good as getting a tackle or interception. Collins has seen spot duty the last three years, coming up with some big plays along the way. A fumble return for a touchdown last season. And an interception return that nearly went for a score a couple weeks ago. Collins, 5-3-2 and out of bounds. Brian Collins with the interception. He has paid his dues over the years, playing back up at three safety. In fact, Collins was scheduled to start at that position this season, but leg injuries and fall practice ruined those plans. Then injuries to other players opened the door at strong safety. And now Collins has finally seen significant playing time as a starter the last two weeks. At first I took it, you know, being a senior that maybe I should have been starting and I got hurt or whatever, but you know, I had to let all that go and just try to take advantage any time I got. So Dante went down and uh trying to take advantage of the plan time that I have right now. Today, he's close to 100% healed from all those preseason injuries, just in time to close out his career with a flourish. It's collection time after paying all those dues. For the Mike Bellotti Show, I'm Pat McGilvery. Well, it's a position where you've juggled a number of different people around because of the injuries, with uh, Jaya Figueres being gone and uh, Dante Lewis being in and out of the lineup. Uh, so Collins is, and Isaac Walker, two guys that have had to come in and play for you. Brian's done a great job. He really has, from the standpoint of, of biding his time, continuing to work hard to be a good football player uh, at both strong safety and free safety. And, and uh, obviously he's come in, and he had a great football game a week ago. I mean, super game, and really was our defensive player of the game mm -hmm. and uh, against Washington State. And I think uh, we're very happy to have him there and have that depth and the ability for him to step in and play. It's tough to wait around for your turn, and especially when you're a fifth-year senior. But Brian has done that. He's accepted it. And now he's getting a chance to play and performing well. Well, let's uh, take a trip back in time as we take a look at one of Oregon's all-time greats as we celebrate the 100 years of Oregon football. This guy played in the early 60s for the Ducks, 
uh, in the record books in a number of statistical categories when it comes time to throwing the football. Uh, they always called him a winner and a leader, and he certainly was that. We get more on Bob Berry from Walt Fox. <laughs> Barry wasn't the most gifted athlete to ever play quarterback at Oregon, but all he did was win. The Ducks were 21-8-2 during his three years as a starter. He was a tough guy. I mean, he was, and you talk about competitor and competitiveness, and he was probably the, one of the best. Skill-wise, he made it because he was a tough and worked his butt off. He didn't have the strongest arm. He wasn't the fastest kid, but by gosh, I mean, when they, he called a play, he could just sense the fact that they thought that's the right play and they usually made it go. Barry's junior season, 1963, the Ducks had one of the best teams in school history. They finished 8-3, and three, including a game with Indiana where they had to score in the final minute to win. And all I remember him saying in the huddle is that, hey, you need to give me enough time and we'll, get, we'll score. And we're on our own 20-yard line. Oh, yeah, right, Bob. He says, no, I'm serious. If you don't block, I'm going to kick your butt. Barry's senior season, the Ducks were seventh in the country, the highest they have ever been ranked, and finished the season 7-2-1. and one. When you had Bob there, well, you had, had the confidence that uh, you're going to be playing a, a real good game because there's no question about it. He, he had the confidence of all the, all the ball players. Barry still stands sixth on the all-time Oregon passing list, fifth in total offense. Not bad numbers for a tough guy. For the Mike Bellotti Show, I'm Walt Fox. Tough guy and a winner. Uh, fun to look at all of those old films and, and see those guys. Uh, Barry, you could see, just had that kind of determination and grit to pull his team to victory. Well, we have great tradition of the quarterback position, and certainly his performance contributed to that legacy. Indeed. Well, when we come back, we'll uh, hear from Josh Wilcox, who is very familiar, as you might expect, with Bob Berry. You saw his uh, dad in this uh, last piece. We'll hear from Josh when we return. Are you ready to do something about your hair loss? Yeah, but I'm concerned it won't look natural. Over the years, millions of men, like yourself, have been concerned that it might not look natural. But at Hair Club, we carefully design human hair, specifically matching the color, texture, and wave of your own. So, no matter where life takes you, whether you're out with friends shooting hoops, whether your hair is wet or windblown, even during the most intimate moments, you'll always feel like your hair is part of you. In fact, I spent a lifetime creating the most natural-looking, natural-feeling hair. Really? Yeah, but don't just take my word for it. Maybe not, but you can take mine. Yeah, and you can take mine, too. So call this number now and receive your free brochure. You'll see men like yourself looking better and feeling great in today's most up-to-date hairstyles. Yeah, okay, I'll make the call. Your free brochure is waiting. Come on, make the call. dinner ideas? Every Tuesday, the Oregonian features a new selection of recipes and coupons. Well, that's kind of useful, don't you think? On Highlander. He's not a kid. He's a con man. A clever young rival returns. I don't know what you're up to, but I'm through treating you like a little kid. You come after me and I'll kill you. Now, this innocent imposter. I'm scared. Please come and get me. Crafts a deadly trap. I've been waiting for you for a long time. <laughs> on an all-new Highlander. Tuesday at 9 on WB32. What's for dinner? Got it. Hamburger Helper Stroganoff. I'm gonna make a real good, feel good meal. It's gonna have some good old family appeal. They're gonna love it. A home-cooked meal. Hamburger Helper makes a real good, feel good meal. Rich hamburger.
hamburger helper stroganoff with real sour cream. Make a real good, real good, real good meal. Welcome back to the show. Joined now by junior tight end Josh Wilcox of Junction City with the bright tie on. And uh, you talk about players playing with pain. He's doing the interview with pain today. I, I guess the first question is, how's the shoulder after the hit late in the game? Uh, the shoulder's all right. I mean, you know, it's not going to keep me out of this week for sure. So, uh, you know, we'll just get in there and get it treated and, and take a look at it and see what happens. I guess at this stage of the year, uh, everybody's got bumps and bruises of some sort, don't they? It's, yeah. it's a physical game and it takes its toll. Oh, it takes its toll, definitely. I mean, guys are out there, you know, trying to work hard and at the same time. <laughs> They're trying to, you know, not get injured again. So it's it's difficult. But on Saturdays is when uh, you get to know you're ready to play. Uh, Arizona State came to town, a very physical team. Uh, they've improved defensively over the course of the year. Give us your take on uh, what happened. Well, I mean, what happened was we lost. Uh, you know, we didn't execute the way we needed to execute in, in all aspects of the game. I mean, special teams, we had good momentum, and then we had a mess up on the kickoff coverage. and. And, you know, on offense, we weren't doing a great job on first and second down. You know, they, they came and had a good scheme on defense for us, and, and they were blitzing through. And then the first couple of times, we didn't really adjust to it. And then after that, and you know, we needed to establish a running game, which we didn't do. And, and you know, as I'm part lineman, part receiver, and so I know how it feels, you know. And I think, uh, you know, I could have done a better job in the whole game, and I think everybody knows that, that they could have done a better job. So, you know, it's time to regroup and, and time to get ready to play again. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights involving you, Josh, as far as receiving. Uh, we've got three receptions here. First, uh, early in the game, about a nine-yard reception. Give us your... Uh, well, that's just a little choice route that Coach Bloody mentioned before. and You know, I, I kind of go off where the linebacker is. And then this is kind of a ace pump route. Uh, Blake and I both do pump routes. And Jabri would have maybe got a block for me. <laughs> Tripped me up a little bit. but uh, well, At least he didn't let him tackle you. Yeah, well, <laughs> the turf got me on that one. Uh, and then you know, this is a play you got hurt on Yeah, here. this is a pump route again also. And uh, Tony hit me with a nice pass. And number 13 is supposed to be their fright night guy. And it looks like I kind of got him. But as, as I was, something happened right there. And as I was getting up, they were yelling at me a little bit. So that kind of fired me up to get back in there. And also, uh, you're one of those guys that doesn't want to lay on the ground very often either to show the other team that maybe you are injured. I know you try to get up as quick as possible. <laughs> you ran off the field before even the trainers could. Uh, Let's talk about the, the game coming up, uh, Washington. Uh, you know, a week ago at this time, a lot of people were saying, well, gee, this could be for the Rose Bowl. It, it's not going to be for the Rose Bowl, mm -hmm. apparently. But it, it doesn't really matter when Oregon and Washington get together. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a physical, emotional game. <laughs> this is the dogs. You know, that's all you can say. And there's not, I think it's a big rivalry. And uh, I don't think it's the nicest rivalry. I mean, you know, basically, I think there's a lot of competition there. And it's kind of the Northwest powerhouses going at it. And I think that. You know, we want to go up there and show these guys it wasn't a fluke last year because they think a lot of that we were a fluke. And I think that we want to prove to the nation that, you know, we can beat the Washingtons consistently. You know, but they're a great team. They got, <laughs> they're loaded on defense. You know, they got a great tight end on offense. They got two great running backs and they got Heward back. So it's going to be a war again, as usual. So I guess we got to strap on the combat boots and be ready to go out. <laughs> That's about what it is. Uh, they've got some pretty good defensive players, obviously. Lawyer Malloy, a uh, safety back there, may be the best safety in the country. Yeah, he's a preseason All-American who can fly around and, and, you know, put the hurt on you. And they got a great inside backer in Ink Aliaga and some other guys. Uh, Malloy? Or yeah. Noah. What's his name? They have two Malloys. They're spelled yeah, differently. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, that guy comes up. He's supposed to be the smallest guy, but lays the hardest hat. So, you know, but we got to get ready to play and we got to execute. And, you know, their defensive line is always tough, so... It's time for us to show up and have a good game. What about the emotional uh, level of your team after uh, this game with Arizona State, maybe losing the, the one goal, and that was defending the conference championship? And not that it's totally out of the realm, but, I mean, it, it doesn't look as good as it did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, how about uh, gearing up and, and getting emotionally ready again? Well, if you can't get ready for, you know, Washington, Arizona, and Oregon State, then you shouldn't be here. Uh, you know, these are three big games in the Pac-10 conference, and especially, you know, we got probably three of our biggest rivalries, you know, you know, Arizona's always been a good game and of course Civil War, but, you know, we got to get ready to play and, and our season's not over with and, I, you know, guys shouldn't go in with the attitude that, well, we didn't get our first goal. And, well, you know, that happens a lot. I mean, you know, Wisconsin didn't go to the Rose Bowl last year, you know, and, and I, they went to a bowl game and they keep playing. Well, we want to get tradition up to where it should be for Oregon football and I think that it's time for us to do that and keep working hard. 
Well, you're one of the guys that's reestablishing and continuing that tradition for Oregon. Uh, I think a lot of people respect what you have done. You've done a great job so far, and good luck this week. Thanks a lot. All right, Josh Wilcox, the outstanding junior tight end for the Ducks. When we come back, we'll take a look ahead at the Huskies. Stay with us. I'm Dream Weaver. This is 1010 AM, The Voice. Come on, Portland. Let's talk. Give us a call at 235-1010. Politics and news. You don't know the first thing about Republican politics. What you guys are trying to do here. Traffic and sports. We're talking about the Blazers today, and your opinion counts. We're your local talk connection. If those other stations turn you off, tune us in. We're 1010 AM, The Voice. Sunday, only Simon could turn a hole in his pocket into romance. My perfect mate, a pants inspector. You married Inspector 38? Can you believe it? Me, married to a celebrity. Is he headed for the altar, or is she taking him to the cleaners? Whoa! Watch Simon, Sunday at 9.30 on WB32. Think, Howie, why is your throat, your cough, <coughs> your fever, all for yours? Because it's nighttime, and you can dwell on it. Take what you use during the day. <coughs> well, Mom, you'll still be up all night coughing. Your speech will bomb at the convention. Nighttime is no time for a one or two symptom medicine you take during the day. Room service? Do you have any NyQuil? The corner drugstore? With Vicks NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, snuffy head fever so you can rest medicine, the difference is night and day. This is a taste you can't resist. I say put a can in every hand. Do the Pringles twist like this. Pop a top of well, keep it fresh. Flip it in. Grab a stack of your favorite snack. Let the fun begin. Uh, there's no stopping once you're popping. Hey, wake up. Don't get caught holding that bag. Hey, that's no party. Greasy pieces are a drag. Uh, there's no stopping once you're popping. Once you're popping. To save Madagascar's endangered species on the world of National Geographic. Special Encore, Sunday at 10 on WB32. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. Let's clean up a little unfinished business from the Arizona State game, first of all. Uh, people want to know about the, the injury department. We talked to Josh. He's sounds like he's going to be back this week. How about some others? Well, uh, we lost Joe Donenberg probably for the season. Looks like he's injured his foot and maybe ligamentous damage, and uh, we're not sure. We'll probably know more uh, Monday. Uh, Reggie Jordan suffered an eye injury that didn't allow him to see very well a track, and I think it was just a swelling thing that should go away. We'll know more again today. Other than that, there are a great deal of accumulated bumps and bruises. Uh, both uh, Asher and Rule's shoulders are hurting them, but I think uh, that nobody will miss this game this week. Yeah, I know everybody. Well, we, may, we may even get Kenny Wheaton back. Oh. Uh, we've talked about that. Uh, he can cut down his cast. Uh, and there's the good possibility he can play. We, we won't know probably till late in the week. And Troy Bailey didn't play this week, held him back again. Yeah, and Troy uh, was questionable. I think the confidence factor was not there, but he can, uh, I believe he will play this week. All right. Everybody wants to suit up and uh, head up to the big game in Seattle. The Huskies uh, come into this game with a, a couple of losses and a tie with USC. So, uh, you know, their Rose Bowl hopes were dashed a little bit, although they're still right there if USC would lose. Let's take a look at the highlights from that game. Washington got off to that great start, the Halloween weekend, and uh, pumpkins galore and big hits. Watch the official here. Yeah, the official took one in the nose right there. I know that, that was, that's a tough hit. He said, I can make it, though. I think I'm okay. <laughs> and, you know, they established the running game. Uh, Neil back in the lineup. Yeah, Neil did a nice job. I know he had 156 yards and came back. And Sheehy's been doing a good job for him, too. So they're, they have two tailbacks that can really go. And their offensive line does a great job. They, uh, they block out the sun a lot of the time. He hits a seam here and takes it all away. And that's, that's not easy to do. SC's defense has been playing much, much better this year. So at one point, Washington leads 21-0. The high fives galore at Husky Stadium. But then... In the fourth quarter, USC comes back, hits a couple of touchdown passes, and they end up tying the game. Yeah, and SC is, a, is a, they can be an explosive offense, but they also methodically, they're the best third down conversion offense mm -hmm. in the conference, and they get the score there, decide to go for one, uh, which again, in their, their head now, in the tie thing, they've gone 
uh, have not gone last. So again, if all things work out, they will go. So it was, you know, it's a smart idea at that point on the road to take a tie. Yeah. So SE still in the driver's seat, but uh, you know we still have three weeks to go, and a lot of things can happen. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, Washington. We didn't see a whole lot of the defense there, but they've got uh, great defensive personnel, as uh, Josh alluded to. No, uh, Lawyer Malloy and the whole group, Inc. Aliaga, the linebacker, but they are playing better and better defense as the season's come along. I don't think they were quite there yet early, but the last two weeks or so, they have really done a nice job. I don't know what happened. Again, I'll have to see the film of this, the SC game. I'm sure they're disappointed in that, but they have great defensive tradition. Lambright, uh, as a head coach, was a great defensive coach. I'm sure he takes pride in that part of it, and it'll be, it'll be a heck of a game. Offensively, uh, we mentioned the tailbacks. Damon Heward uh, has been coming on this season, had a, a great game uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, is the guy at quarterback. They've stuck with uh, Damon, and he will be the guy at quarterback this week as well. He's become a more consistent quarterback. I think they have confidence in him. His confidence is up, and uh, certainly he is playing well at, at the quarterback position, and every team, no matter what type of offense you run, needs a quarterback that can lead the team and play with confidence. Uh, you're going into a, a bee's nest here. Uh, the dog pound up there in Husky yeah. Stadium. They're going to yeah. want to atone for what happened last year. A great game here at Austin Stadium. Yeah, we, we, we got one I think they think we stole, but uh, we'd like to think we won on our own merit. We have to do it again, and obviously it'll feel much better to go up there and do it up there at their place. Well, this is a big uh, weekend in the Bellotti household. Uh, uh, the football game was disappointing, but you got some other things that I know you want to take care of. Well, today is my daughter's uh, ninth birthday, and I want to say happy birthday, Carrie, and, uh, you know, I hope this is... <laughs> it's not as happy for me, but I hope it's happier for you. <laughs> well, we all wish her a happy birthday as well. A reminder, uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking us, uh, where can we go to watch this game? Well, you have to be in the stadium to watch the game coming up yeah. because it will not be televised live and it will not be seen on any tape delays because of uh, the, the Huskies television situation. So we do want to make sure that you are aware there's no live TV and that means if you want to see the highlights, you got to be here next week. We'll have them all for you right here on the Coaches Show. It'll be interesting as the Ducks uh, take... The Mike Bellotti Show is brought to you by 